The unwritten rules of Facebook. It cut all of our ad costs by over 70%. How do you want to be able to take in all of this data that's around us? Some of these campaigns have done up to $20 million in sales. I think this is going to be the future for the next 10 years. And now here is The Win with your hostess, serial entrepreneur, marketeer, and chief sexy boss, Heather Havenwood. Look, our whole world revolves around our iPhone, iPad, Droid. You know they say we look at our phones on average 150 times a day? And if you're a small business and want to actually grow, you need to reach people where they're looking at and listening the most, their smartphones. See, marketing via text messaging is a great way to start, and it's super easy. Just text the word START to 72000 to learn more about my friends at Mobit. They're marketing experts and they will show you how to use text messaging for your business and to get more leads and convert them amazingly. Again, text the word START to 72000. Again, that's text the word START, S-T-A-R-T, to 72000. Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Win with Heather Havenwood. You can check me out here on iTunes, iHeart, and all the crazy stuff. And today I have someone on the line, which by the way, he's already interviewed me. So now I get to interview him, which is a ton of fun. And he's a Texan. So just watch out. This is going to be a fun interview. And he's kind of a badass. And I can say that. So welcome, Matt. You're you can say it because it's your show. It's That's my why. Show. <laughs> it's my damn show. Exactly. I can say that. So thanks for being here. I was on your show. I need more money, which was a ton of fun. I really enjoyed it. So tell us about, I'm just, and I'm going to tell them, tell everybody about who you are and how amazing you are and your background. You're, you're really a serial entrepreneur, but I just kind of want to, for just a second, I need more money is a pretty strong statement. And you're coming out with a book. Let's just talk about it for just a second. What is the story there? How did that come to be? Look, I, I need more money. I mean, period into story. Yeah. I need more money and I got some money, but I need more money. The genesis of the story of, of I Need More Money, which is a book that's coming out in the summer of 2017, it started with my brother-in-law mm -hmm. uh, two years ago, Easter Sunday. We always have Easter Sunday at my mother-in-law's house. This is my wife's mom and my wife's brother. And he looked like heck in a handbasket that day. And he looked stressed, but he looked sick too. He looked sullen. He looked gray. He just didn't look good. And he didn't eat anything that day either, which was different, unusual. And then immediately fell asleep. And when he woke up, I said, you know, John, something's just a little off today. And he said, boy, I've been feeling off for the last three or four months. I just, he says, I just don't feel well, but I'm going to the doctors in the morning and we'll get it taken care of. Well, he went to the doctor the following morning and then we got a call. He, he uh, was taken immediately to the emergency room with stage four cancer. Oh, oh my it, gosh. He's 46, four kids. The youngest is, has some learning disabilities. And uh, obviously, it was tragic and unfortunate, but it really does get worse in that it turned out that he had no health insurance and no life insurance and a hundred bucks in the bank. And so the genesis of the book is that story, but it really goes in two different directions. Yeah. The, first, the first direction is simple. I need more money, and I think everybody else needs more money. Right. But the other piece of it is, why was I able to help him? Why was my wife and I able to help him? and basically remove the financial burden and the guilt, by the way, that I know he had in an effort to try to get him better. It didn't work. He died almost one year to the day. And my wife and I carried all the bills. We took care of everything for that one year. And it was an amazingly powerful situation for us to be in, to have accumulated enough that we could help. And yet, at the same time, you're asking the question of, why didn't he? A hundred bucks a month could have gotten him a hundred thousand dollar term life insurance policy. By the way, they all had iPads and iPhones, and he dressed to the nines. He was such a handsome guy. He'd walk in a room, just light up the room. Always dressed well. It's a yeah. really interesting point you bring up, and I'm so sorry that happened. And and Thanks. really condolences to you and your family. But it does bring up a good point. It brings up the point of as an entrepreneur, we're out there risking and doing things, but you're really not thinking. Um, for me, I sometimes think oh, I'm going to live forever. And it won't happen to me. And nothing will happen to me. I don't need that insurance. You know, I'm 40. I mean, come on. Yeah. Come on. I got at least 20, 30, 40 years to hang out in this world. And it really is kind of an eye opener. Like, what's the whole point of entrepreneurship? And people forget sometimes as an entrepreneur, the whole damn point of entrepreneurship is to make money. 
Period. And the reason we make money is to use it for things that we need called health care, whatever that is, education, higher education for our kids and on it goes. But people forget, I think sometimes in entrepreneurship land, they get this thing called, we want to do our passion. It's about making money. I love that you say that I need more money because in, in the world of entrepreneurship, people kind of have this, I don't know what the word is, make it help me, Matt, but the word is like, ooh, you make money, you're evil or something. Like, <laughs> hello, I want to eat and I want to have great health care and I want to be able to go to Cancun and relax a little bit. That takes this thing called Donato. Yeah. So what's wrong with that? And we, what was your mindset different? The difference between you maybe and your brother-in-law that's no longer with us. Maybe what was the difference of that mindset? Maybe you can shed some light on that. Yeah, you're right, though. Everybody thinks that we've got more time. And, yeah. and the reality is that we don't know when the surprise is going to happen. Look, in my office last week, last Thursday, we had a huge flood from the office next door to us. Uh, it's a vacant office and the pipe burst and it flooded our office all night long. So we woke up and first guy here in the office at 6.30 in the morning calls me and says, we've got a problem. We've got three inches of water all over the place. We don't know when two planes are going to hit skyscrapers. We don't know when a toilet's going to break. And we don't know when the doctor is going to say you got stage four cancer. So this silliness that so many entrepreneurs are caught up in, which is this lifestyle business. I'm not a lifestyle business guy. I'm a maximum profit business guy. And I think more people need to take that approach. And the reason for the approach is not greed. It's truly for freedom and the ability to help people. Because the takeaway of my brother-in-law's story, like I said, is twofold. One, don't put yourself in that spot. But two, God, what a blessing it was that we were able to do it for him. What an amazing, incredible power that it was that we had the money to help him through that. It didn't impact us at all, but it made all the difference in his attempt to get better and try to recover. Now, the downside is that his family is still left with no money. Could you imagine, just think about it for a second, 100 wow. grand. What 100 grand would have done, right? Helped so much with the mortgage, with the, Everything. the bills, whatever's coming their way, the future education for their four children. Because let's be honest, it's expensive out there. And I mean that in a most loving way. It's not easy anymore. I don't, yeah. you know, it's not. I mean, people have this like high in the pie sky. It's great. And just think about it and it will come. It's like, you have to work now to make money. I mean, a lot of my friends who are true entrepreneurs, meaning they're interested in the damn profitability of their business, not what it looks like from the outside, but are they making money? That's called balance sheet statements, all this kind of fun stuff. They actually go, hey, I'm 60, 70 years old, 65, 70 years old. They're looking at the balance sheet. What can I use this money for? How can I leverage that money? That's true entrepreneurship. I live in Austin, as you know, and I, I feel like Austin has this mini Silicon Valley feel sometimes. And so there's this, it's a cool thing to be an entrepreneur thing going on. You know what I sure, mean? Like sure, I'm sure. an entrepreneur and I'm like, great. Like what's your business and what's your profitability in that? And what's your tax rate? They're like, eh. you know? <laughs> I'm working mean? on an app. We're going to VCs. We're in round two on an app. Yeah, I mean, it's listen, it's craziness. It's all so silly. The reality is it takes a long time to make real money. By the way, I talk about this in the book because I want- Yeah, what do you talk about in the book? What's the book about? I want real takeaways for the readers, not only as a wake-up call for people. By the way, the working title of the book before the publisher picked it up was uh, Middle-Aged Man's Bitch Slap. That was the working title. I really like that, I did too, but they didn't like it. We had to tone it down a little bit. But I love the two because so many people need that wake up call. Look, I live in a fancy town and, you know, I coach my youngest son's lacrosse team and I show up there. I mean, I'm I'm rushing to get to practice at 530. I'm changing in the parking lot into my stuff. And I see all these guys out there throwing the ball with their kids. They're already changed out in their Under Armour. They're all driving big Mercedes. And I'm saying to myself, what the heck do these guys do for a living? I'm grinding it after 21 years, have a very successful business and I'm still humping it every day. And these guys make it look so easy. It's and not. that's, it's not. It's and not. That's the point. I'm not looking for the easiness. I'm looking to stay in the game all the time. Because yeah. I think when you stop staying in the game, that's when you get whacked. It is when you get whacked. It's a great analogy. I mean, baseball, football, you look at the guys who make it look easy versus the ones who are out there every single day and they're hitting the grind and they're actually grinding out. They're the ones that have the longevity in their business, 10, 12 years, which is a long time in the football space, right? But in our world too, Donald Trump right now, just because he's in the, the space right now, obviously all over the news, and people look at him and go, well, he's, he's still grinding it out. Should billionaires still grind it out? 
it's because he loves the game and he likes money. Like, totally. <laughs> and I love and that about him and he loves the power around that. But how many times does he help people? There's so many stories out there that kind of trickle through. You start to hear about him, how he's paid someone's house off or yeah. he's completely wrote a check for someone's health care. Like you don't even hear about it. But he does that because it gives him the power for himself. So I have a question for you. So if I'm picking up the book right now in summer 2017, I need more money. What are you going to tell me? And I, I have a, also another question behind that. Is is this a book that you're kind of, are you writing it for your a brother-in-law? Is it kind of like, I wish I gave him this advice back then and maybe I would have made a difference for him? Is it is it that? It's a great question. There's a couple takeaways in the book. The first yeah. takeaway is I hope it is a wake-up call. I hope I hope literally the content of the book wakes people up to the concept of they need more money. And they stop living in what we refer to in the book is called false positive, this idea where you're really not doing as well as you think you are. I mean, look, just because just you can go on the $20,000 vacation and drive the Mercedes and the bills don't come in pink slips has no connection to wealth or riches or all that stuff. The second thing in the book is we give very specific data of really what it takes. And I got a little pushback from the group on this one, but I pushed through anyway. I mean, I specifically say, Life begins at 150 grand a year. Life gets better at 250, and life gets real good at 500. That's the way it plays out. Period. End of story. Nobody can tell me differently on it. So for those making 50, 60, you got to get to 150. For those making 150, you realize it's not enough. You got to get to 250. And for those at 250, you can realize that you're probably pretty darn close to 500, 750, or a mil with just a few tweaks. If you're already at 250, the book can get you to a million. And we get there through the roadmap. We refer to it as our small business money machine. The small business money machine encompasses for both employees and employers. And we walk you through the six or seven steps that impact your financial existence and get you from wherever you are to the next level. So it's a fascinating book peppered with lots of my own personal stories of my struggle to get, I don't want to say rich, but certainly to accumulate wealth. And then all the mistakes I made along the way, and then all the people I've been able to help not just financially, but also through the roadmap. I mean, I've got some people in my office whose lives have been changed. I've got hundreds and hundreds of clients who followed our small business money machine whose lives have been changed. And I want to be able to do that to the masses. And the book is is my effort and my attempt to do it. And thank goodness it got picked up by the number one uh, literary agent called Dupree Miller. And it got picked up by uh, Penguin Books, which is a division of Random House. So that's kind of big deal. It is. They saw it too. But you got to put yourself out there. I mean, who wants to I mean, I guarantee you my wife is going to be at lunch with some of her friends and they're going to be like, what's this? You need more money? I thought you guys are doing pretty good. What's going on to the narrow house? You know? uh, well, we always need more money. <laughs> That's need all more I, was money. Say. I just want to let you guys know a little bit about um, Matt here. He is the CEO of a couple businesses. However, you can also find him at CFFNation.com where he hosts his own weekly radio show, which I've been on. He hosts The Grit as well as I Need More Money and many other things. Go check him out at CFFNation.com dot com nation and nationwide.com go check those both out as well as facebook.com forward slash cff nationwide so matt all right so here you are in dallas i have to say i have, I have to put this out there because you and i talked about this i live in austin you live in dallas and i lived in dallas for a couple of years and i i called it the thirty thousand dollar millionaire you know what i'm talking about sure they're everywhere especially yeah. the deep Ellum area all that now people go what's a thirty thousand dollar millionaire it's the guy or gal usually guy just gonna put that out there as a generalization they're making about $35,000 a year. They got a really nice BMW or Mercedes that's probably on a lease. And they're spending about $1,200, $1,500 a month for a one-bedroom apartment in the Deep Ellum area, a little Greenville area. And they look like they're making a million dollars. Meanwhile, their paycheck's about forty k. So is that still going on in Dallas, I have to ask? I mean, I don't, I don't run in that circle no, anymore, so. but, but I... I would certainly say that it is, and not just in Dallas. I think it's happening all over the place. And the reality is because the work required to go to the next level is tough. It's a clouded, crowded marketplace. And people just, they think it's going to occur over time. And there are no guarantees anymore. Look, the idea of starting a coffee shop and seeing what you can do with it, selling hamburgers real cheap, even starting a landscaping business with a lawnmower out of the back of your truck, those days are over, y'all. That's already been done. It's completely saturized. You have to figure out the niche the nuance, your tweak, your version of it, and go all in. I like to say inch wide, mile deep. Mm -hmm. Riches and niches are the only way you get rich in this environment. The generalist gets crushed. That's something I've said in other podcasts and other shows before, which I'm all about going deep. 
and going deep, deep, deep. I was actually told that by a mentor of mine almost 10, 15 years ago at this point. So let me ask you a question. I've, I've heard this from some people and some people say no, some people say yes. What do you think of this? Act as if. There's some people say, well, act, you're successful and you will be, or act as if. I'm a little like oh, yes tough. and no. I don't know. What do you think? What's your, it, what's your take on that? Right. It's the old fake until you make a yeah, deal, yeah. right? There's I tell so you, many fakers. <laughs> there's so many fakers. The, the, I think the reality is that the marketplace is so transparent now yeah. that you don't need that. So what I'm looking for is when somebody comes to my office, I want them to tell me what their real desires are, what their ambitions are, and what their problems are. I'm not interested in how well you're dressed and the name dropping and all that sort of stuff. I need to know you personally. And the rich people that I have been fortunate enough to meet, they see the phony coming a mile away. Yeah. So I think there's a tremendous value to authenticity today. And young people aren't admitting it. They want to be something different. And I think if they just came in, if they came to me and said, Man, I don't, I don't know what to do. I, I, I just need a roadmap. So I'd give it to them. That's what I was looking for. Goodness sake, that's what I need. I never got that. I was begging for it. Somebody tell me what I should do. I'll run through fire for you. And it never came along. So the rich guys are looking for that in the younger generation, and we're more than willing to help. But it's hard. Are you so my seeing answer it on your end, like, are you seeing that the I'm going to call them the millennials for a second, so don't you know people freaked out. But are you seeing that people like they're raising their hand, going, "Tell me, tell me," because I was the same way, but I'm not seeing that in that generation. Are you? I'm not, but it's a huge, durable, competitive advantage if they want to use a Warren Buffett term. It separates them from the masses, and so all they have to do is start looking a little. Look, like I had a guy recently, two weeks ago on Facebook, completely steal my post. And then I, I set it out there and my followers just hammered on this guy. Then he sent me an instant message on Facebook that said, hey, lesson learned, please take your post down. I said, no way, pal. The only way I take it down is if you do a live video with me. We're going to do a Zoom right now and I'm going to post it on my Facebook page. That's the only way it comes down. And he jumped on. He had the guts to do it. He was in his robe. It was nine o'clock in the morning. He was in his robe on his balcony. I said, I looked at your Facebook page. I said, that jet that you're in front of getting on, is that your jet? No. Is that is that your Ferrari? No. Is that your Lamborghini? He's like, no. I said, well, what are you doing, man? Why? You're 20-something years old. You don't got two nickels to rub together. Why, why are you stealing my Facebook post and putting yourself up there? I said, what you should do is say, here's what I'm trying to do, y'all. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to get out of this apartment and get into the mansion. Show us the work. Don't show us what you think is the finish line. Because by the way, as you know, Heather, that ain't the finish line. No, there is no the finish, finish line. line. There is no finish line. Oh my God, you and I are like brothers from another mother, <laughs> but I'm not a guy. So that didn't sound right. But I completely agree. There is no finish line. That's what I learned when that, on that island. And Mark, there is no finish line. You don't even know when that, that finish line might come tomorrow when you're 46. Sure, you don't exactly. know when that finish line is going to come. So there is a never ending. There is a never ending. You just are constantly going after what you want on a never ending basis. And that sounds, I think, overwhelming to people because they want to have that finish line. Like I finished high school. I finished college. I finished something. I completed it. Check mark, check mark, check mark. But as, as a friend of mine said one time, like a, the, he had a carrot, right? A carrot. And it's just like, it never ends. You have to understand the carrot will never end. So you might as well enjoy having the carrot in front of you, right? Totally. Always, always, always. And just enjoy that process of that. Ever want to create an online course? Ever want to duplicate yourself and your expertise, but you're not techie? Then listen up. Thinkific was designed with you in mind. Thinkific is an online platform that gives you all the tools you need to easily and quickly create and sell online courses. They take all the tech headaches out of online course creation, like designing your course, hosting your content, taking payments, and integrating with other applications. So you can focus on creating the content, engaging with your students, and making money. Are you ready to stop repeating yourself to one person? and instead leveraging your time by creating an online course. Great. Then go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash thinkific. That's T-H-I-N-K-I-F-I-C for a very special offer for friends of Heather. Again, go to heatherhavenwood.com slash thinkific to your success. So let me ask you a question. I want to give you guys an understanding of, of who you are. 
And sounds like, well, it says here on your bio that today commercial <laughs> fleet financing made the Inc. Magazine Top 500. Congratulations. Was that in 2016 or 15? What year was that? Oh, we did it three years. We did it 14, 15, and 16. Of but um, we finance uh, big rigs, bulldozers, yeah. tow trucks, very blue collar industries. Which are great uh, industries, by the way. The They're, world goes around in transportation, right. everything. And, and even with technology moving, I mean, how do you think Amazon Prime gets to you? Gets to you in a truck or a car or a small truck. So we're in good shape. I was fortunate, Heather. I picked the right industry. I always knew there was money in my business, right? Because it was dominated by large publicly traded banks. I knew that a small independent with a lot of hustle could do well in it. The reality is I just didn't realize how hard it was going to be and how long it was going to take. And I think that's a takeaway for the audience. Listen, success doesn't happen overnight. In yeah. fact, you will face far more failures for an extended period of time. And that's my first book, The Grit, comes in. And you got to be gritty. You just got to stick it out. You got to keep getting up every day, turn the key to the office, show up, make phone calls, and eventually the tide will turn if you're pushing at the right level. And I'm a huge believer that the reason businesses fail, and I, I, I would be interested in your take on this, but I believe businesses fail not for economics or politics or even lack of cash. It's simply lack of effort. Yeah, I concur with that because I think effort sometimes will overcome cash. That's why I see nowadays with the young, I feel like I'm beating you guys up over there, millennials, but I, I see that a lot with the millennials like, well, we need to, need to wait for our next round of funding. I'm like, no, pick up the phone and dial some dollars and sail, you know, <laughs> sell something. <laughs> Pick up the phone and start dialing. That's from the Wall Street. If you haven't read, saw, seen that movie, I highly stress it. But it's all about pick up the phone and start dialing. I don't know if you ever saw that movie, The Wall Street. I love it, of course. Yeah, but yeah. it's not just millennials, though. I mean, every, it's all ages. Everybody doesn't work hard enough. I mean, that's yeah. the way it is. I look back at my first 10 years in business. I thought I was pushing, man. I, I had a lot more to go. I needed to push at a big, deeper level to be able to move the ball and move the needle. And I didn't get it. I thought I was pushing, but I was moving at these small increments because I thought that was good, right? What People was think- moment though? What was the moment that you're like, oh my God, I thought I was moving hard and I'm not moving hard. Was there someone that just like slapped you across the head like, yo, biatch, you ain't doing something. Yeah. <laughs> like, or was it um, just something else? Yeah, married to her. <laughs> I mean, every day I would come home and I would look for a shoulder to cry and my wife would say, a true story, I remember it vividly. I can feel- Literally right now, I can feel the touch of the doorknob when I walked in. And I knew it was Friday. I knew my wife was going to ask me the same question. Did you pay yourself this week? And my only thing to her was, am I going to tell her the truth or am I going to continue to lie? And I said, uh, no. And she said, I'm going to ask you one question. Did you pay your employees? And I said, yes. And she said, how could you do that to us? Now, I have a, my wife and three boys. How could you do that to us? What's the matter with you? She would say. And she said, one day you're going to realize it, Matt. You're so much bigger than your business. One day you're going to realize it. I heard that over and over. It would make me crazy. And then one day I said, that's enough. Man. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to build a $100 million business. I'm going to shut my wife up. And I did it. I did <laughs> both. The power there. <laughs> my wife never asks me that question anymore. You know, I have to say, men out there, you're listening. The right woman can make or break you. It's a lot yeah. of saying. They can make Important. or break you because we have that power to push you or to destroy you. <laughs> so yeah. you might as well pick both. one that's going to both at the same time, yeah. as my fiance now says. Oh, you just bother me. What is that? I'm like, well, it's because I'm pushing you. Stop pushing me. That's my job. <laughs> so yeah. it's either that or I destroy you. So let's let's not do that, right? I my wife was right, as you are too, though. With all due respect, I don't know your fiance, but everybody needs a good push. They do. They do. Especially, I think, I do believe. And, and I remember there was a period that there was a, about five years ago, I was here in Austin. It's a quick story. I got invited randomly to be in front of a group, small group, about 10 guys. They were in their 20s. So they're definitely in college. And I sit up there. They were there learning how to talk to women. Okay. And I said, you know, women can make or break you. So you have to be really careful in who you select. Don't pick a psycho. All women are crazy, but don't pick a psycho. But you got to know that all women are crazy. So you might as well pick a good crazy and all women can make or break you. Now, I just remember the moment and I'm looking at these guys' eyes and the eyes just had this look like, what? What do you mean? How does that work? Exactly. I mean, it's like deadness, right? Like I had, they didn't know how to respond to me. And some goober guy in the back's like, whatever, man, like women don't make or break me. And there, this guy's like 22. I'm like, really? Have you ever like had a girl, you know, break your heart and you can't even think the next day and you fail your test? He's like, what? <laughs> yeah. You know, and I just was like, ha, 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 So you might as well learn that all women are crazy, but the ones you stay away from are psycho. 
a good so crazy good. will push you, right? So it's the most important decision you'll make because really you need is. that you need that person right there, especially and good and bad. An entrepreneur, especially for an entrepreneur Big in time. partnership. So let me ask you this question: in the world of entrepreneurship, have you ever had a partnership go bad? I'm not talking about marriage, but like a business partnership, or maybe a, a situation <clears> where you're like I probably shouldn't have done that. Listen, the reality is my old man left when I was six months old, mm. right? I I never saw him. I never met him. I never spoke to him. I know nothing about him. From that moment on, and I know it sounds weird, from that moment on, I was not a very trusting person, period, end of story. That. So for me, partnerships or or really shoulders to lean on, mentors, man, I, I never saw that. They could have been there for me, but I was so entrenched in, I'm going to have to do it myself. So I never looked for a partnership. To this day, I have in all my businesses, I have no partners. And that has hurt me, by the way. That has absolutely hurt me. I could have been more successful had I relied on some partners. And now I'm starting to build some, they're not partnerships, but they are unique relationships. I'm doing some real estate stuff with a couple guys that is really, really exciting and changing some things. That's completely outside of my core businesses. But I'm seeing the power that using other people's expertise to make up for some of my weaknesses, I'm seeing how quickly we can jump steps. Man, if I had done that earlier, we'd be a lot further along than we are, and we're pretty far along. So the reality is, Heather, I just beat my business with a stick. For tw- <laughs> I mean, I just beat it to death for 20 years. And eventually, I looked up and I had something meaningful. But along the way, it was extremely difficult and extremely hard. And I love that um, you're so honest about it and authentic about it. I mean, really, I love that. And I, I'm with you. I like individual sports, you know, like tennis or I love skiing. Why do I like skiing? Because if I fall, I fell. It wasn't because somebody else. I'm not a big team sport girl. I'll watch football, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So, of course, in business, I'm very like that with business partners. And I've had a bad business partnership completely explode. So even yeah, more so now. I remember that story. I remember you telling me that. So now I'm even more so of the single the solo. And I just wanted to ask you, in your world of business and hiring people and finding people to do business with, I would probably insert. I'm pretty sure on this with you that you're really good at reading people. Uh, yeah, I like to think so, but I've been let down many, many, many times by employees that I thought were going to be home runs. So we actually, uh, I mean, I have a wonderful executive management team now that's been in place here from finance to operations, to sales, to, to human capital. We refer to it human capital. Everybody else refers it to, to human resources. I have a wonderful executive team now. And I buffer a lot of those decisions against them to see what they say. And we also do predictive index testing now for all employees so we can pull a little science and data. The one thing I'm not very good at, though, is determining how deep someone is willing to go for their own success. I usually underestimate that because for me, it was anything. And that, unfortunately, I look at most situations like that, but most people don't. They just they're really not willing to do what I was willing to do, right. which was, yeah. and I talk about it in my first book, The Grid, which is my definition of grid is anything legal, anything. Anything legal. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. No, I, well, I concur with that. Human capital, I think your business becomes a human capital business and less about the service and product. It becomes about the people in the business and how you train them. In the world of entrepreneurship today, if there was someone listening who is a millennial who hasn't turned us off yet, or maybe someone who's a female or, or not, because you, by the way, you're the one who said, I have to, I have to reiterate this because I love that you said this, that women make better managers. We do. The two toughest people on my executive management team are women, and they are tough as nails. They are oh better at business decisions than I am. We're good. Let's no be question we've been, about it. We've been running households. We've been the CEO of households forever. You don't think that's like running a business? You ever tried to run a household of children? <laughs> like it's well, like women have the amazing shit. power, though. They have the ability to go back and forth yeah. between female and, I'm not going to say male, but female and, and, yeah. and decision making. Men don't have that, right? We just have cavemen. Women have the ability to go in and out, and it's a magical combination in business. Well, it sounds like to me you've... You've recognized that in women and you've allowed them and given them the space to like show it. And when Bring you it. do do that, your business will completely alter. I mean, I really believe that. So that's it what has. I'm hearing. No, when did that happen? When did you have that aha moment? Curious. Do you remember? Kind of ish. <laughs> you know, I've had, I had a, a wonderful office manager when I first started the business. She helped me grow the business. We were together six years. I had a second amazing office manager. She was with me six or seven years. And my VP of, of operations now, 
has been with me going on six years. So people always look back on the important people in their lives. I mean, outside of my family, these three amazing women who helped me grow this business were incredibly powerful. So, you know, my executive team has been in place a year and they've done an amazing job. It's a weird transition, though, for entrepreneurs who are listening. When you go from the tactician and the doer in your business to now truly the owner, manager, overseer of just a few people, it's a very weird transition. How was that transition for you? Can you talk about that a little bit? I'm in the process of that in one of my companies. <laughs> less and less I, technician and trying to release stuff, and it's very hard. <laughs> It's weird because you almost have a little bit of guilt because now you start doing things. What do you do? You start writing books, you do podcasts, you do speaking things, and you're sort of like, well, who's closing deals? Well, you know, your systems, your processes, your people. Now it's go time. Is it true? Do you really have that? Or do you just have you having to sell and clean up all the mess? I mean, so it's a test. And I should have done it earlier because I did too much too long. And I think I paid a price for it. I mean, I'm not kidding for, for the entrepreneurial audience. I'm 47 years old. And I think I paid a physical price for my business. My business hurt me physically, whether it's putting on weight or not working out enough because of time pressures, all that sort of stuff. And I'm actually starting to get back to this balance idea now. But boy, oh, wait, I was wait, 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 wait. What's that? I was what? so twisted off. What's yeah. that? I'm just, well, hold on. What's a balance? I'm kidding. I think entrepreneurship, we don't have that. Like, what's balance? Is I think a balance is where you actually choose what your calendar has on it, right? Mm. It doesn't mean it's a smaller or a lesser calendar. It's My calendar is ridiculously full, but a lot of it is with things I like to do. My choice is I'm much more in a proactive mindset than a reactive mindset. And that's important if you want to, if you want to, I think at some point, get out of your business. I mean, you got to be. The business has to be able to do, Heather, what it was originally designed to do. Which is support you, right? It look, could be anything. If you want to surf in, in Costa Rica, I'm down with that. Go for it. If you have a business, if you want an internet business that makes five grand a month and allows you to do that, I'm okay with that. So why are you doing the books and podcast thing? I mean, look, you own four companies that do over $100 million a year. Yeah. You know, like, hang out. Go to Cancun, buddy. Like, what's, what's, what's the point? Oh, what is, I don't, what is that for you? I don't like that lifestyle. I mean, I just got back from Belize a couple of weeks ago with my kids and my wife and another couple. We had a wonderful time. But like Trump, like guys like Cardone or Vaynerchuk and all these names that we're familiar with, I'm not putting myself in those categories, but I like what I do. So I don't live a life that needs a vacation, right? If I needed that life, I would change it. I like doing everything I, I do. I start piano lessons tonight. I like doing all of it. So oh, that's cool. Why do people need to get away from work? I mean, just make it life. Right, right. Just make it life versus a place to go and retire from. That, have it fun with it. It doesn't work. Have fun with it. Well, I just really want to appreciate you being here. I love talking to you. We could talk forever. I know um, we could. And we totally, but, I, but as time is coming out, you're, you've got a full calendar. And I totally respect that. So you're listening to The Win with Heather Haven Wood. But I just want to do last words here. So last statements or last words. And if someone's listening who's a millennial saying, I don't know, I really want this. I want to know the blueprint. What is that small business blueprint? Where can I go? What can I do? Matt, what do you yeah. think? First thing you got to do is you got to dream big, like monster big. I'm not talking about like dream, like own a house and a car. I mean, big monster dreams, huge dreams, private jet. I mean, multiple mansions, if it's monetarily, how many people can you help? I mean, big, big thought processes. The second thing is you got to find the right platform. How many people do we know who have ambition, but they're just in the wrong thing? I interviewed a, a person this morning. She worked at Cintas, the uniform company. Hustler, hard driving. I'm like, but you can't make any money in that job. So the platform is really important. You got to find the right platform. A couple of great platforms. Number one, cybersecurity, always going to be powerful and important. I think artificial intelligence is going to change the world. My boys are 14, 12, and 10. I spend a lot of time on those two subjects with them. I want them to go into those spaces. The transportation industry is a wonderful industry too, but not a huge money maker in most of them. Mine happens to be a good spot, but people need to understand the platform. And then last thing I would say is don't be afraid to ask somebody who's ridiculously successful for their help. They'll give it to you. I'm, I, I'm working with a billionaire right now who's become a friend of mine, all because I simply said, look, I, I just need to learn from you. He's like, fine, hang out with me. Let's go. Just because I asked. All the guests I've had on my radio show, including you, comes from asking. Don't be afraid to ask. Ask for what it is that you want, and you will find far more people willing to help you than people who reject you. That's actually really true. That's really true. So you do have mentors. You do have coaches. I do. Some I pay big money for. I probably 
I pay over six figures a year for personal coaching. Every single person who's really successful, all, if you really ask them, they they say that it's about it's about a it's about a six k, you know, or whatever, hundred thousand dollars or more in true coaching mentorship because they're I always do. willing to learn what's the next level, what's the next. Yeah, level. I need to know what I don't know. I finish sure. every meeting that I'm in if I'm in a sales capacity or, or a marketing meeting or a, a mentoring meeting. Finish every session with this question: What didn't I ask that I should have asked? Ooh. And they tell me, they say, oh, you should have, when I took you down here, you should have said this, right? Or, well, here's what I think's happening. I finish every session with, what should I have asked that I didn't ask? Tell me what I don't know. Tell me what I don't know. Oh, that's really powerful. I'm so going to use that, by the way. Do you mind? Go I, for it. It's I, great. I mean, it's three or four great takeaways for the audience. I mean, those are things that I wish I had done earlier, yeah. you know? Well, thank you for this very much. I appreciate you very much for being here, Matt, and saying yes to the win. So you can go check out Matt at CFFNationwide.com. Check out his book, I Need More Money, coming out summer 2017, which I yeah. definitely want to have a copy of that signed. On its way. Yeah, it's on its way. You got <laughs> it's it. It's on its way. And go check us out. So thank you so much, Matt, for being here. I appreciate you. Have an awesome day. Thanks, Heather. I enjoyed it very much. Appreciate you. Do you suffer from bloating, constipation, science problems, extra fat around the middle? Then you might have candida in the body. Candida is a yeast that is in your blood. And to get rid of the candida, you need more than just an intensive colon cleanse. You need Ultra Slim Cleanse by E2 Lab. Ultra Slim Cleanse helps reduce candida, which can cause inflammation throughout the body. Ultra Slim Cleanse can go into your blood and pull out the toxins that cause gas, bloating, and other symptoms of yeast growth. Go check out heatherhavenwood.com forward slash slim. To watch a video from founder Dr. Don, are you ready to get back to skinny? Go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash slim to get ultra slim cleanse. Thank you for listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Interested in coaching with Heather? Go to heatherhavenwood.com and sign up for a business discovery consultation. Here is your free gift for listening. Get three audio chapters of Heather's book, Sexy Boss, How Women Empowerment is Changing the Rulebook, when you text the word sexy to 7200. Again, text the word sexy, that is S-E-X-Y, to 7200, and receive your three audiobook chapters. Number is good only in North America. For outside the USA, text sexy to plus one, Three two three four five seven double two double eight. Text sexy two plus one three two three four five seven double two double eight. Long distance charges may apply. Heather wants to hear from you. Questions you want answered on the show. Comments, interview requests. Email media at sexybossinc.com or leave a private voicemail. Fifty one boss is me. Again, the number is 512-677-4763. Check out all of Heather's sites, heatherhavenwood.com, sexybossinc.com, e2lab.com, datingtriggers.com. This is a sexy boss rap. This podcast is a copyright of Havenwood Worldwide, LLC.